Okay, this is question three from the grade 10 June 2019 paper. This is actually a republication of one of the papers from another year, uh, from the end of year exams. Learners are investigating the effect of increasing temperatures on two different substances, substance one and two, over a period of time. Study the temperature versus time graphs below and answer the questions that follow. It says write down the dependent variable. Now, if you can't figure out in your own head what is the dependent, rem remember the independent variable is what I change and the dependent is what you measure, okay? So if you can't figure it out, the rule of thumb in science is the independent goes on the X and the dependent goes on the Y axis. So here the dependent variable is what we are actually measuring. It is the temperature. Yes, we have the clock going, but we are actually measuring the temperature to see what's happening to the temperature as the substance changes. So the independent variable, as I said, it's usually on the X axis. It is time. Now, there's two marks for the investigative question here. First of all, there are two things that happen with this. There's a hypothesis and there's an investigative question. They can ask you to write down an investigative question or they can ask you to write down a hypothesis. Okay, if you have to write down the question, it must read like a question. You have to have a question. Your question must contain both the independent variable and the dependent variable. Okay, so you have to make a question like what is the relationship or how does this change with that? It must be a question with both the independent and the dependent variable in it and it has to be a question. It can't be a phrase. It has to be a question. And then some of them you have to make the question a yes or no question, but not this one. So here we've got a period of time. So and we've got a relationship. If you look here, we've got a relationship between temperature and time. And we are changing state. Remember, these are state change graphs. So you write a question like, what is the relationship? And remember, we must have the relationship between the dependent and the independent variable. What is the relationship between the what is the relationship be, uh, between the states of matter with an increasing temperature? over a period of time. So now we want to know what is happening to the states of matter as we increase the temperature. Look here, we could get a cooling curve. So you should state what is the a relationship with increasing temperature. And then the other variable is time. So you have to include the time in the question. You can't get both marks unless you have both the dependent variable and the independent variable and it must be in, this, in as a question. In which phase is substance one at, at negative 10? They're checking you're a good scientist and you can read the graph. So here is substance one, it is the solid line. Here, the graph is minus two, minus four, minus six, minus eight. At negative 10, it is a solid. How do we know it's a solid? Because we can see two flat lines on the curve. So here is the solid melting. Here is the liquid turning to gas. So solid, liquid, gas. Remember, I advise you to write on the graph solid, liquid, gas so that you can keep track in your mind of what's going on. Then it says to you, at what temperature does substance 2 melt? So melting is going from solid to liquid. So we need the flat line where it goes from solid below the line to liquid above the line. So this graph is going down 0, negative 20. So this is going to be negative 22, negative 24. So make sure you put the negative, the 24, and the unit, no unit, no mark. It is negative 24 degrees C. So you need to be careful on these graphs. If you can't read the scale on the graph, you're going to get it wrong. They assume you know or have worked out that every small block here is a two degree change in temperature. Then it says to you, state the phase change that takes place at B. Here is B. At B, remember this is a liquid and that is a gas. So it is going liquid goes 
to gas. That's the phase change. Then it says temperature remains constant at B. Explain this phenomenon in terms of the spaces and the forces between the particles. Okay, so why is temperature remaining constant? Temperature only remains constant if the kinetic energy of the particles remains the same. So we need to state that we know why the temperature remains constant. Okay, so we have to state temperature remains constant because the average kinetic energy of the particles stays the same. Energy, what is happening to the energy? You are heating this, but the temperature is remaining the same. So the energy that is supplied is being used to separate the particles, to overcome the forces of attraction and this is potential energy it's being used to overcome the potential energy of the forces of attraction between the particles. So now we've talked about what's happening to the energy because it says explain it in terms of the spaces and the forces. Have we said anything about the spaces? No. So we've said something about the forces. Energy is being used to overcome the forces of attraction between the particles and the particles are moving further apart. So that is what is happening when the temperature is constant. The particles are moving further apart and the energy that you are adding is not increasing the average kinetic energy, but it's being used to overcome the forces of attraction and it's changing the amount of potential energy between the particles. Now it says to you, name the apparatus used to measure the average kinetic. I think this is supposed to include the word energy, but I think it was missing from the question paper. What is temperature? Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles. What do we use to measure temperature? We use a thermometer. So you see, if you don't know your definitions, you will struggle with the questions. But temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles, and we use a thermometer to measure it. Now it says to you, how does the average kinetic energy of substance 1 compare to the average kinetic energy of substance 2 at 90 degrees? This question is testing your understanding of the definition once again. Listen to the de definition. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles. If these two are at the same temperature, the particles have the same kinetic energy. It is equal to what is the reason you give the reason with the definition temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles the two substances are at the same temperature so if you are at the same temperature you have the same kinetic energy so it seems really weird because you like looking on the graph and it's two different curves and all the rest of it. But quite simply, temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy. Yes, these two have different melting and boiling points. And that is because the potential energy between the particles of these two substances is different. So there is a mix of energy in these. And one will have stronger intermolecular forces and one will have weaker intermolecular forces. But if you were to measure the kinetic energy of the particles at 90 degrees, it would be exactly the same. But we aren't measuring potential energy, which is with intermolecular forces, we are only measuring kinetic energy.